Happy Sunshine family. This is the continuation of uh, my phone calls uh, while waiting with Sheila for the jury to come back with a verdict. Um, I call this particular segment of our phone call Being Beautiful. Hello. Oh, hey Sheila. Welcome back for conversation number two. Can you can you awesome. guess how long our our first conversation was on the timestamp? I no. I I I'm, I got a feeling it's going to be specific <laughs> and important. It is exact exactly thirty three minutes. You're kidding me. <laughs> no. Oh my God! Our conversation was exactly thirty-three minutes. Oh my God! If you only knew what that means for me personally, oh, well, I have a thing with threes. They follow me around everywhere. Yeah, because your YouTube channel has initials of of CCC or three. Yes, I know. Wow, man. Uh, Yes, and what is C? It's the third letter of the alphabet. I know. I didn't even plan that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Thank you for that information. Oh, my gosh. We didn't plan that at all. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, oh, my gosh. I got Heather on this call, too? I, I, I want to make sure this app is working right. <laughs> Listen. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't care if anybody ever believes me or not. There is something so huge going on here. So huge. I, I can't, I, like I said, I cannot express enough the hugeness of all of this. The perfection of all of this. The, the synchronicity that I'm witnessing. This was just yeah, another and a long line of them. Yesterday was that super full moon eclipse. There was, there has been such an opening. Such a portal opening. All anyone has to do is, is just shake off any and all of those old perceptions and those old, no longer worn out, does, don't serve you BS and step through it. That's all. And it's filled with love. I want, and you know, I, I don't know, I don't know if I shared with you. I know I put it on my one of my Facebook lives, but I didn't know that someone else had already approached Parker Still yesterday. But I said to him yesterday as he was walking by me in the courtroom, I said, "Pardon me, may I ask you a question?" And he stopped, and I and he looked at me and said, "Yes." I said, "When all of this is over, would I be allowed to hug you?" And he, was, he just kind of looked around and he said, yes. And I didn't realize until later on after we'd left the court and we were at lunch that Judy Jandora had come to him because apparently one of them asked her, when this is all over, she said something to them about the fact that they were all loved and cared for. And one of them asked, well, if it doesn't go the way you want, will, will you still feel the same way? And she said, of course. That's what this is all about. And she said that she could see his face soften. So that had already taken place before I approached him. But, yes, I will tell you that, yes, I am the one that saw him. I'm sure others did, too, when Heather was on the stand. 
and she named the fact that he more than likely, I can't remember the exact wording, it will come out in the transcripts in regards to being attached to the Federal Reserve and whatnot, or being an agent in regards to that, the squirming that took place. I saw that myself, and my heart just went out to him. Because in this old paradigm, this paradigm of scarcity and fear that has been perpetuated for, come on, let's face it, centuries, actually. It's been so pervasive and in the field of consciousness for so long. There's not a, there is not a living vessel on this planet that isn't got this in their cellular DNA, folks face that. But it's okay now. We can release that now. Because I really truly feel that it's okay. We can lay that down now. It might take a little while to sort everything out. But I'll tell you this, I don't have a lot, but I would not turn one living being away from my door. Not one. I wouldn't afford anything. I wouldn't try to keep anything. I mean, for crap's sake, I got folks living in my house I met a year ago over the Internet. <laughs> Whom I dearly love with all of my heart. And I know that all of us have that. And all we have to do is open our hearts and see that that is, I mean, come on, I've said it before, the, the idea that you know, I I really have I have felt into the whole prepper thing that has gone on. That has been an attempt to keep fear perpetuated. Because look at any tragedy, any kind of weather anomaly that has happened. I lived in Charleston, South Carolina during Hurricane Hugo, and I can tell you firsthand. Yes, martial law was enacted, and yes, I lived without power for three months. And that means no food. That means no water. All the reservoirs had so many trees in them, all we got was pine tar out of our taps. Mm -hmm. But I never went hungry. I never went hungry. I never was cold. Because it was all neighbor helping neighbor. And that is what humanity really is about. Make no mistake. In every tragedy I have seen, I've seen people gather together and gather up clothing and gather up food and make caravans to get it to them. Not necessarily going through the charities anymore, but doing it themselves. Gathering up things and taking them to them because that is who we really are. That is is who we really are. The idea that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world is BS that has been put into the consciousness on this planet for far too long. And all anybody has to do is feel into what I'm saying, and they'll know that's a true statement. That's beautiful. Hello. Thank you. Well... It's a, uh, for me, it's true. For for me, I, I I had to let go of that perception. I like I said when I lived through that in Hurricane Hugo, and then I saw it again during Floyd, and I saw it again during Francis, and I saw it again in Houston. I I mean in North Carolina, there were. Loads of people. I, I gathered up things out of my house and sent it with someone who was making a trip, a caravan of, of, of folks that were going to Houston not that long ago. That is what humanity is like. This, this whole BS that people put out there, that's been done on purpose to keep us all divided and at each other's throats and, and you know, all of that kind of crap. This artificial division that keeps going on about politics and, you know, I'm this or I'm that or I'm the other, that is all artificially induced. And it's all been done on purpose to continue to perpetuate that scarcity. 
But that doesn't exist anymore as long as we see through it. That's going to be the big key right now for most of us is seeing through it. Absolutely. That's well said, Sheila. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, right now you you are embodying the word uh, be the way that I define it. You know, I've got... I've got my way of defining the word do as direct observation, but be, that's an acronym and it stands for behave emotionally. And, and that doesn't mean that emotions get the best of you. What it means is to, uh, to make decisions and, uh, and follow through on those decisions with your behavior using your emotions as guidance. So you're, you're doing uh, collects the the puzzle pieces, and when you have a new perception, uh, you change your being. And right now, uh, you are, uh, and and just a perfect example of of behaving emotionally by uh, all of your behavior on a phone call with me, recording this. You're in Tennessee. Uh, you've been there for the whole trial. All of that is is wonderful, uh, you know, emotionally guided behavior in a in a really healthy light worker sense. And the word that I used to describe, uh, you know, just the full embodiment uh, in, in a high vibrational way of being is the word beautiful. Because if you break down that word, it starts off uh, with B E. And then you've got the A-U-T, um, and then the I-F-U-L. And, and it's it, when I break that word down, it stands for behave uh, emotion, emotionally authentic and full. And, and you are just really hitting that word, and that's what beautiful means. And, and, and I hear a lot of beauty on this phone call. I just want to let you know that. You're making me do the ugly cry in public. <laughs> <laughs> well, let it all out. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that. Oh, my gosh. All my life, all my life from the time I was little, I was, I mean, I, I now fully comprehend that that's why I ended up at 490 pounds. Because I was taught that my emotions were something I was to stuff down. I was always told I was too emotional. Oh, there's a verdict, darling. We got to go. Oh, my I will, uh, yes, you heard it live. Would, and um, you've got BC's number, right? Yes. Would you please text her and let her know for me? I sure will. And would you also? Would you also? Um, Make sure that this conversation and the other one goes uh, on Conscious Conversation Central for me somehow <laughs> yes. on Facebook. <laughs> okay, yeah. I love you. Okay, uh, well, we'll make we'll make sure that it gets out there. All right, I love you too. All right, go go get the verdict. All right, thanks. Bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>